virtually call this meeting to order. <laughs> well, Happy New Year to everyone and uh, good evening. We are calling to order the regular meeting of the Sinsbury Board of Education. Today is January 13, 2015. And with that, we have recognitions. Yes, thank you, Lydia. Right. So uh, excited this evening to be able to share a little bit about a special week that took place at Simsbury High School. It was Computer Science Week. Uh, we got a lot of great uh, publicity on this and it was uh, the efforts of, of some of our great staff members and we have some students here this evening so I'm gonna kick it to Erin and she's gonna tee this up and we have a little share to go through to kick off the meeting in the new year that I thought would be great so back in December we had there was a national computer science week and efforts to really expose students all the way from kindergarten through 12th grade to ways of computing a computer science uh, module they can certainly speak better than i can um, regarding it but i would ask if um, our guests could come forward we've got melissa farrington who is our high school com computer science teacher jacqueline petrella who is our department supervisor for mathematics at the high school and we have two um, seniors that have volunteered to be here tonight alex pitkin yep. and anthony mahan uh, that we have and I actually uh, was able to watch Anthony in a class um, back in December when I visited the high school and he shared with me one of his apps and I think I said to him that night it would be great if you could show this to the Board of Education. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I can't I don't know I can't remember but we'll see. Was yours the? Uh, yes how are you feeling? That's it. And Mr. Kelly who is you were very excited about that particular app as well i know uh, we also had the opportunity to bring it to the board of ed um, curriculum committee as well so uh, i'm going to kick it off to uh to jacqueline and melissa and they're going to just give you a very brief overview but this is really engaging and interesting stuff that our students are doing here at Simsbury high school basically the there's such a need for computer programmers and students that are literate in computer science and if you think about it when you go back I'm old now I go back to typewriters <laughs> and but when I was in college you still had a typewriter and when I first worked I had a secretary and if I needed to do a memo I told my secretary what to do nobody has a secretary anymore you type it yourself so we've all become users of technology and so our our generation are users but these guys, these young kids, it's not going to be good enough to be a user anymore. You have to be an innovator with and use technology to create. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to take these kids to the next level. There are so many jobs and so many opportunities for the students. And what we're trying to do at the high school is to make computer science more accessible, to make it more interesting, to put a new sort of spin on it, not just at Simsbury High School, but nationally. So we've developed some, some new courses have been developed, and I worked on a program with Trinity over the summer on one of these programs that I'm now teaching at the high school. And this program, we um, learn the basics of computer science, sort of high level, and we use a program called App Inventor. So we can learn all the basic constructs of programming, but at a, a very um, more introductory level. And what we can produce with this language is really pretty incredible. And it's a lot of fun. And it lets the students collaborate. It lets them be creative. And they are already innovators. And that's really what we're trying to get, is to try to get more students involved in computer science. So that's kind of what we're doing. That's what the course is. That's what this new course is. It will be an AP computer science course, not next year, but the following year. So um, we're looking for. Um, that to continue and it will be then endorsed by the college board so that's coming down the road but these guys are going to start by just telling you a little bit about what they feel like they get out of the class and then after they do that we're going to sort of demo for you sort of our process when we create an app and then we're going to we brought tablets we're going to show you some of the work that we've done so that's kind of our plan so Alex you want to go first well first of all let me just start off by saying that for the start of my senior year I had no idea what I really wanted to do in college, mostly like every senior. And then after a month I, of taking computer science, I quickly realized that this is basically what I wanted to do. It was very fun. I had to like, like it's the only class that I actually look forward to going to sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I can just go and sit down and be creative and, and I learned doing it. Like I can go there, uh, sit down at the computer, make my own app, do the lesson, and it's really fun. And I learn a lot while I'm doing it. Basically, what happens is you make an app. Like if you see Facebook, it's just 
pictures and scrolling and all that stuff, one side of the app is called the designer side. And you design this whole picture s side of it. And it doesn't do anything. You can't do anything with just these pictures. So it, after you do that, you go over to the block side, which is where you put all the coding, which gets these pictures to do what you can do with the app. So you take a button, move it over to the uh, designer side. Then go over to the block side, go press button, and you do this, and something happens. So it's very creative. You can make many other ways to do that button click, and it just it makes you really think out of the box. And uh, that's basically all I have to say about that. <laughs> <laughs> that was an excellent, excellent explanation. <laughs> very simple. And what's cool before you go ahead me is that what we did with the computer science week was the elementary kids, they were doing the block coding um, from grade six through eight. Um, and even the fifth grade and the fourth grade classes were trying it too. And they were on the computer making, you know, the angry bird move to the pig. And they were using blocks that just said go left, turn right, move forward three steps. And so you can start young and get to the point that they're at of making the um, basically, what I get from computer science, most of all, is experience. Um, in college, I'm looking forward to you know, pursuing a game programming major or a computer science major. And for that, I would like some background in it, and that's what computer science has provided me. I get to you know, mess around with all these apps. I get to be creative. I get to be innovative. And if you told me a few months ago that I'd be standing in front of the Board of Education <laughs> talking about computer science. Or on TV for it. Or on TV. Yeah. <laughs> talking about computer science after only five months of taking the class, I would have never believed it in my wildest dreams. So, um, yeah, computer science, for the most part, it provides me experience. It provides me the chance to be innovative with applications. And Brian also takes computer science. He's in my other course. He's in the AP computer science course, which is a little different. We um, concentrate on a text-based language, which is Java. But also, Brian's learning a lot and was very involved in computer science education week. You should have seen him in, what was it, second or third grade? Third and Third grade, grade yeah. leading a class. It was <laughs> great. So. And Melissa said before about making it accessible. We last year had one computer science course, and it was AP, which is not necessarily accessible to all kids. And this year we have four courses, or four enrollment courses. And we're anticipating that it's only going to grow. So we're excited about the interest growing in it, too. So basically, um, so questions before we go on. So yeah, this is start seniors. So right now, seniors are taking Actually, this. Actually, I have in my computer science class mostly juniors, about half and half juniors and seniors. I like to have juniors so that they can take this course right. their junior year and then take the course that Brian's taking senior year. This is the first year we've offered this, so these guys, their first shot if they are seniors, so right. they will go on to college stuff. But this will this is also the same course as taught as an introductory college course same type of course so Alyssa was able to do this last summer it was a two-week uh, professional development or four how long was it it was eight weeks, eight yeah. weeks. Wow. <laughs> but through grant, through grant. and the devices also you won't make part that of <laughs> it was grant that came to us <laughs> thank you very much thank you <laughs> so that's why we have this course and very thankful to be able to do it through through that that opportunity so let's see what the apps are okay, so, let's, so yeah Anthony you want to start with this app is basically called how are you feeling what it does it portrays emotions it's all about emotions so as you see here the first step in the app is storyboarding you got to plan it out before you actually go and do it so that way you have a sense of what you're trying to achieve so as you can see I have storyboarded um, So yeah, so we start off and I give them sort of some sort of guidelines that they have to come up with it, but very general. Like the last one we did, it had to be simulation, modeling, and animation. That was that was the requirement. So I mean, it's just wide open. So they have to take a lot of time to first of all come up with what's their idea. So that's what Anthony's done with his storyboard. So after they do their idea, then they have to pitch it to the class. So. Here's the pitch. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay to feel sad sometimes. I know you might not understand what I'm saying right now, but by the end you will. Basically what this app is all about is about emotions. And most of the time you think that when it's about emotions, maybe even music related, oh, 
you press sad button, play some sad music, maybe some slow Johnny Cash music, um, <laughs> play hype music, maybe you get some heavy metal, relax, maybe music that you do yoga to. But in reality, what makes our app different is that we want to portray the opposite emotion. So for example, Say if you saw the Dallas Cowboys Green Bay Packers uh, game <laughs> last weekend. Um, if you're a Cowboys fan, you'll be pretty angry. <laughs> so basically, you have all this pent of anger, frustration, emotion. You just want to punch a wall. <laughs> well, see, then you wake up the next morning and you know you've done something you might regret. You may even wake up in a chase. <laughs> <laughs> However, we don't want to do that because with other apps, you press the angry button, you get some heavy metal, and all it does is make you angrier. That's not what we're trying to achieve. What we're trying to achieve here, when you press the angry button, you'll get some slow, melodic music to calm yourself down. You'll be optimistic. You'll be like, next season, the Dallas Cowboys will claim that six Super Bowl ring. Of course, if you're a Giants fan, you'll be pretty happy that the Cowboys lost. However, say, you know, I'm working and my boss is a Dallas Cowboys fan. Of course, I'm not going to go to work with this big smile on my face. And just be like, it's okay. It's always next year. Well, I might walk out with a pink slip. So basically, if I hit this happy button, it will change me to the opposite emotion. It might make me sad. It might make me angry, but at least I know I get to keep my job another day. <laughs> <laughs> so basically what this app is about, it's truly about to change your emotions. And uh, Mr. Trello, I believe, posed this question to me. What if you're, you know, um, happy? Or do you want to be sad? Well, again, the situation I provided earlier would provide an example of how, you know, being sad or being angry would be a benefit. If you're watching the Titanic, you don't want to be happy. <laughs> So, hit the happy button, you'll get some sad music. This app is truly about changing your emotions. It will help you fit into social situations, and it is more innovative than other apps that just play you the emotion that you're expecting. So, hit the relax button, you might get the heavy metal that you weren't expecting at first. But truly, this app is innovative. It allows you to fit into social situations. It allows you, say for example, if Alex is sad, well, Alex, we could be sad together. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So the kids all pitch, and they have to do their presentation to the class. And then they, once I say, OK, that's a good idea, sometimes students will ask questions, give them some feedback. And then they go back, and they get started. And then they basically do the process that Alex has already described, where they, first of all, come up with the images. and so. Um, this is the app that he was talking about. So they have this big smiley face. We're going to bring some around and sort of show you some of the work they did. But they come up with the user interface. And so they figure that out first. They have to go out on the internet and they have to find materials that they can use. They have to make sure that they're not copyrighted. They have to be um, know where the, what the sources they can use. They have to come up with their sounds. This one has sound with it, so they have to come up with that. And then what they do is, like Alex said, once they get that user interface, what it's going to look like together, then they have to go to the programming site and they have to like actually program it so that it does something. When I touch buttons, it makes things happen. So that's kind of how it does. So what we're going to do is we're just going to walk around and um, we'll pass. This is the one that he just pitched first. Then remember, they did this one, what was it about? two and a half months ago. So this was a very early on app. So we didn't know a lot of programming function yet, but you can just touch some of the buttons and see what they do. Sure. And we should probably go. Oh, I know. That'd be fun. <laughs> <laughs> okay. then we might have to turn the sound on. Does that one have the sound on it? The sound, Alex. Oh, I thought these were Oh, the sound is um, muted. Oh, no. Yeah, so we need to just turn on this. I don't have all my glasses here. Yeah. Do you know where it is? I can, uh, yeah. You can go to settings. As Ms. Farrington said, all the music on this app is copyright free. Oh. There, it's playing some sad, uh -huh, there you sad, go. relaxing, I guess, sad, kind of yeah. more <laughs> relaxing, happy music. So if you're kind of balancing it out. Guys, what did you think about 
apps that you have on your phones now, now that you know how some of those things are done? I mean, you know what? are you, are, what, That's are you actually impressed a good with how question. Hard, hard it is, or yeah. are you impressed with how easy it was? Every time now I open up an app and I look at like these apps that are sold in the app store, I think, wow, he took the shortcut and made it really easy, or wow, it's actually really hard to make. I, I don't even know how I'm supposed to do that, you know? Like, I actually think about that when I open up like, a game now. You know, oh, wow, look at that. I don't, I didn't never thought about that before. Oh, oh wow. So I'm thinking about ways this. to make it better. <laughs> exactly. All right, what we're doing now is yeah. I'm switching you to a different app. This is one that Alex just did, Skydive. <coughs> Gosh, I'm horrible. This is in our animation. <laughs> oh, yeah. How do you? Oh. You got to you go left yeah, and right to avoid the bombs. It's a little video game. Ooh, it's hard. hard. <laughs> 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 I lost twice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, you want to give it a go? Our <laughs> it's pretty difficult. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm... Yeah, that's exactly what I'm trying to do. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, you do it. There you go. There you go. Oh, my gosh, this is really hard. It. Yeah, it's hard. <laughs> oh. oh. That's pretty good. All right. You should turn to a point. Yeah, you're supposed to miss these two guys. Let's see if I can figure you guys. I didn't have a glass. No, I don't think I have a glass. This is another one that um, some students did for Simsbury High School. So it's sort of all things um, Simsbury all together in one app. So you can get to um, the face, yeah, the um, Twitter account. You can get the the mail, everything, everything all in one SHS spot. Restaurants. So, yeah, so, <laughs> That's what I want. Yeah, I wanted it to be shown. Well, they, well, well you want seem to be the, the high hitters there. Power school, the what's really important. Yeah, so, <laughs> right? That's so instead and of having to just do. take you to oh. Twitter. Yeah, instead yeah. of having to go three different Certainly, yeah. sites on your phone, <laughs> it's all in one place, and so you can yeah. just from there go to one place. Flip back and forth or whatever you want. Again, an early app. Jeff, you talked about enrollment over time growing in this course sequence. So what was it again? Yeah, I know. <laughs> You're jealous, aren't you? Yeah. A little bit, yeah. Yeah, and that's great. They need to yeah. make those it looks available. Good. Yeah. Yeah. That would be a pretty cool. Yeah. Okay. And we anticipate so it will. Oh, we didn't do that's great. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, eventually, we'd like to introduce it at the middle level and yep. you know, somehow incorporate it at the elementary level too throughout their math curriculum. That's very outstanding. Oh, yeah. It's really well, cool. we went to the class. What was interesting is you sit there, it's, it's, you go through all, like, like all these different computers where the kids are working on their apps, a lot of that's like and they all have such unique ideas. Right. Without yeah. getting so bogged down in a lot of the and jargon and, so and a lot of the, uh, the theories. And then exactly. So you get really into it from the start, and then you can just build on the knowledge and get deeper and deeper and deeper, and then really get into the weeds once you're like in the AP course where I'm. Yeah, we get we get pretty. You guys. Um, and they yeah. don't want to take it in this the class. Students, oh, but they're also, this is going to be really hooked, and then you're going to want to know how it works behind that. Once you said, College Board has this course on half to be an AP, yeah. but we want to keep like a an <sighs> academic <sighs> level and then also have an AP version. Yeah. <sighs> So, so we think our first uh, endeavor of uh, participating K-12, I happened to go to a kindergarten classroom as well and uh, saw the kind of work that they were doing with Minnie and Mickey Mouse and really trying to move them around and the high school students sitting there on the floor with those <coughs> kindergarten students engaging them in this kind of code work as well. It was really exciting. So we appreciate the work that you've done. Thank you to the students for coming and presenting tonight. And I think it certainly, hopefully kids talked about it when they went home and um, really shared the kinds of experiences that they had in our K-12 classes. Actually, classrooms. I wanted to share and I actually brought, I had a letter from a former student who, um, was a Simsbury High School graduate who is now a professional, saw the article in the paper, sent me an email and said, you know, I'm so thrilled at what you're doing and what the school is doing and I would love to come in and talk to your classes. I am a professional in the industry and I would like to come in and oh, share with great. your students. So oh, it sorry. has definitely gotten more notice than just us and just inside the school. So the community I think has definitely um, Take a notice, and I think yeah, are great. excited about what we're doing. So, great. Great. thank you. Very good. Thank you. Thank you so Thanks, much guys. for coming great out. Thank you. Really great. It's always, always excited to see yeah. your students in action. Okay, I let you beat me on that game. <laughs> <laughs> Next time. I have little Very ones at home. I got to keep up. <laughs> All righty. Moving on now to public audience.
Thank you very much for for, uh, for attending this evening. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, please state your name. And Can I stand up? Address. Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. Good evening. That's a tough act to follow as an, <laughs> as an English major. Wow, congratulations. <laughs> That's such a testament to our Simsbury schools. Good evening. I'm John Hampton, Nine Knoll Lane, Weatog, and I'm Simsbury's state representative. And I wanted to appear here tonight to wish you all a happy new year. And uh, as I begin my second term, to avail myself to support you guys as you uh, uh, support our schools and do your incredible uh, work on behalf of our students, parents, and, and teachers. And uh, though not on the education committee this year, I am vice chairman of the children's committee, which now has cognizance over DCF and um, covers other areas such as child abuse, uh, mental health issues. The Commission on Children, uh, Committee on Children handled the uh, uh, mental health component of the Sandy Hook legislation last year and we'll be implement implementing that this year. Um, we'll be uh, addressing issues such as concussion intervention and prevention, um, uh, simulated handguns in schools, uh, animal therapy, a variety of different issues. Um, so I wanted to come and I'll, I'll come back again just to let you know that I am here for you um, Here for our teachers and our students and of course the Board of Ed many of you are, are frequent fixtures at the Capitol But I invite all of you to to come. I know crack day is on it's next Thursday. Thursday. No next something on Friday Thursday 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 um, so I hope to see uh, All of you at the Capitol and hear from you. I'll leave my card and email me call me um, proposed bill deadline is Friday. Um, so if you have any proposed legislation that you have in mind to get to me, I would welcome it. Um, the 15th, which is Thursday as well, is Family Day at the Capitol. I co-chair the uh, IDD caucus, first in the nation caucus for families with those with intellectual and developmental disabilities. And this is the second annual Family Day. Last year we had 300 families. This year we anticipate four up to 500 families advocating on behalf of uh, issues facing uh, families struggling with these critical issues. So you're all invited to that as well. I also wanted to do a shout out for Martin Luther King Day in Simsbury and thank the schools for their participation in this annual event. Tara is on our committee. Uh, we have some student performers. Um, the Henry James Chorus will be participating as well as the um, MLK in Connecticut Memorial Committee. We have a great group of students who will be presenting on the progress of the uh, of the memorial so I just wanted to stop in say hello um, keep in touch um, and I'll be back and of course call me anytime and I'll be glad to advocate on your behalf anyone else in the audience wishing to address mr. Kelly Chris Kelly Tenny Tom said of course, the joke is now I get to tell you what I really think. <laughs> um, but I would be remiss in um, leaving the Board of Ed um, and moving over to the Board of Selectmen if I just didn't take a moment to uh, acknowledge the uh, tremendous respect I have for uh, everyone that's sitting in the front of the room here, uh, as well as all administrative staff and professional staff that I've had an opportunity to um, uh, work with as a member of the Board of Education. One of the things that really has crystallized for me is I've fought a lot and, and have begun to interact with a lot of different groups in town. Similar to what we just saw here, nothing great happens by accident. Uh, it's really the result of tremendous amount of work on the part of, again, administrative, professional staff, parents, students, volunteers. Um, and uh, I just want to convey to you uh, that just uh, as I had a passionate commitment to help as a member of the Board of Ed, uh, that as a member of the Board of Selectmen and liaison to you, uh, that that sense of good stewardship will continue. So, uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Very good. All right, anyone else wishing to address the board? Thank you, Chris. All right, seeing none, let's move on to Board and Administrative Communications, and we'll start with Brian. Yes. So, first semester at Simsbury High School is ending in a little less than a week. I think with that, most students were probably pretty happy to get yesterday's snow day to kind of... It's <laughs> a tough one, Brian. Take, it, take a second. <laughs> I figured I only got a couple more weeks here, so I got to get in while I can. <laughs> and especially after that comment, lucky for me, most students have their college applications in. 
at this point, so, uh, those with January 15th deadlines notwithstanding. So a lot of pressure has been taken off most of the senior class. In, a, in the non-scholastic realm, tickets for uh, the uh, winter musical Thur Thoroughly Modern Millie are now on sale, and I believe that's going to be around the last, last weekend in January, first weekend in February. So definitely mark your calendars for that. And just quickly in terms of uh, computer science, as someone who's in the AP computer science course and is just loving every minute of it, I can definitely attest to how empowering it is to be able to look at something and have just in the back of your mind almost like code just streaming, thinking about how, how you might attack a problem because at its core that's really all that computer science and computer programming is. It's taking, as Ms. Farrington said on the first day of class, it's taking big problems and making them into little ones, which is a skill that I've, I personally have applied to all my classes, just the, the th algorithmic thinking and taking big problems and making them into small ones that allows you to do things that you never thought possible with, with computers and just in anything you're doing in your academic career. Great, great testament. Great to hear that, Brian. Future, future um, <laughs> info for students that are yeah. interested in That's great. recommendation. Thank you very much. Susan. Nothing tonight. Tom. Nothing. Todd. Uh, the only thing is that uh, there was actually an article in The Current about the musical. I don't know. Yeah. Somebody, was gonna say it. Somebody else was going to yeah, say no, it. No, 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 go ahead. But uh, yeah, a nice article. And the name of the musical? Did I hear that? Thoroughly modern, modern Millie. Millie. That's right. I'm sorry. Okay. Yep. That's great. Great. Very, very good. So, yeah. um, I just want to uh, express my thanks to Chris for his years of service. It's been a pleasure to have you on the board and serve alongside of you. I'll miss you at 2 a.m. in the uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> negotiations committees, late night uh, sessions. We may call on you just to sure welcome a call. <laughs> But uh, certainly, uh, I think yep. I speak for all of the Board of Ed members saying that uh, we appreciate your years of service and will greatly miss your judgment and your insight and uh, the experience that you brought to the table. So good luck on the Board of Selectmen and uh, thanks very much. Thank you. Tara. I, I was going to thank Chris too. I could never do it as eloquently. That was perfect and uh, thank you very much. I want to thank everybody in Terrafield. The kids in Terrafield made us Christmas cards which for the Board of Ed which I thought was very, very sweet. Oh, very nice. And I think we should thank them and for that and the um, Martin Luther King event is on Monday at 2 p.m. at the First Church of Christ in the center of town for anyone who um, is would like to come it should be really great Hey, Aaron. I only have one item. We have an early release on Friday, January 16th. Um, so our elementary teachers will be uh, engaging and looking at the new practice tests for SBAC and looking at what any instructional implications may be as they look at that. Our middle school and high school teachers will be doing departmental work that will be focused on curriculum design development and just looking at the work that they're doing over the course of the year. So uh, three hours of professional development on Friday afternoon. Susan, nothing at this time. Mr. Chris. Chris, I would just like to, to thank you personally. You know, superintendent's uh, success is in large part uh, a result of the support and the confidence that the board members have in the work uh, that you're moving forward. So I really have enjoyed our work together. Um, uh, I appreciate your support on the curricular programming side as well as uh, negotiations. And much like Mike, we will miss you uh, in those late hours and those uh, uh, you know that very important work but uh, ten and a half years uh, is, is a great period of dedicated service uh, we will certainly miss your efforts I've always so appreciated how you engage in, in kind of process thinking and, and work things through so uh, thank you very much for your time and your efforts and uh, good luck in the future thank you Matt. and I'm pleased you're gonna be our board of ed liaison I so am. you will be here which uh, is great for us as well very good. Well, Chris, where do I begin? I mean, you know, I said it would be a long meeting. <laughs> you, know, um, you know, I just sort of echo and <laughs> echoes uh, everyone's thoughts and 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 good wishes and things. Um, I've known you for a very long time, and and you've been a great right hand person for me, left hand side, um, actually. But um, it's just been a pleasure to work with you, to know you um, personally as a friend and as a colleague. And, and Chris was always the yin to my yang, or yang to ying is, is when we 
spoke on, on many issues. Chris knew, Chris and I always, we may not have always agreed, but we always came came to a conclusion of, of something. So it was a pleasure working with you. Um, we're pleased that you're going to be our liaison here, and, and we know we can't keep a good man down, and mm -hmm. we won't be going too far, so we will be um, you know calling you from time to time. So uh, you'll probably be up at 2 a.m. anyway, Mike, so. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, but thank you very much, Chris, for all your serve, years of service with us, and best wishes and good luck on Board of Selectmen. Thank you. Great, great. And one last thing here. Um, the Cape Caps Convention was in November, and um, Cape was uh, presented by, uh, by Commissioner Pryor with the Board of Distinction Award um, for high standards, dedication, and teamwork. And we were also presented with um, oh, one free cave workshop for Board of Education Board of Distinction Award. And with that, we have the 2014 black to put on, I think is on the wall over there. So um, right. it's always great and to, uh, to, to add that every year. And uh, a lot of work goes into it, into the uh, process for applying for districts. So we're very, very fortunate and very lucky that um, we received this. And with that, I have pins for my fellow board members here on behalf of CAVE and above and beyond work and service. So thank you very much for, for um, all the work you, that, uh, that you do. All right, that's it for me. And moving along, we are now on to recommended actions. Do I hear an approval of the minutes of the December 9th meeting? Approved. We approve the minutes of the meeting. Do I hear a second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? <coughs> Motion passes. Thank you. We are now on to exhibit two personnel. I have uh, one consideration for you this evening. We have uh, two resignations, one of Michael Vaughn, technology teacher, and the other of Gretchen Nelson, special education supervisor. So I would recommend that the Board of Ed accept the resignations of Michael Vaughn, effective January 6th, 16th, 2015, and Gretchen Nelson, effective February 27th, 2015. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Thank you. All righty. We are now on to Exhibit 3, Acceptance of Donation from Central School PTO. <coughs> Thanks, Lydia. We have two um, gifts this evening. The first is from the uh, PTO, another uh, very generous donation of various technology for Central School with a total value of uh, $5,949. Um, there's uh, three red cap sound field systems, which you may recall from prior donations. Uh, they they help with the um, students being able to hear better within within the particular rooms. There's also three iPads to be purchased, two PCs, and a laser printer that uh, helps to support the PTS publishing center. So we'd ask for your uh, acceptance of this very generous gift. So moved. Is there a second? Second. second. Thank you. Um, any discussion? Again, thank you. I think just the continued support yeah, and generosity absolutely. of our PTOs and really helping us Very much so. um, continue to move forward, particularly with technology, is mm -hmm. just an outstanding. Absolutely. Always, always um, well worth it for our PTOs to contribute. Thank you. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. <coughs> thank you. We're now on to exhibit four acceptance of donation from Friends of Simsbury Crew. And this uh, donation, which I, I think is probably becoming an annual event, is for a uh, donation of uh, $2,616.60 that would be used uh, to purchase uh, Vortex jackets for both the boys and girls crew team members and the uh, donation to the Simpson High, uh, High School uh, Athletic Department. We'd ask for your consideration as well. Do I hear a motion? Oh. Do you have a second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Again, thank you very much to uh, Friends of Simsbury Crew. We are now on to exhibit. Get your grinders for late from. Yeah, <laughs> right, right, yeah. Yes, absolutely. That's right. They're on sale now <coughs> for the time. For, late, for uh, Super Bowl Sunday. Super Bowl. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. More information the on the website. Thank you. 
We are now on to <coughs> Exhibit 5, approval of MELT Workshop Scholarship, MELT. I have a, a scholarship for your consideration. As you know, it goes through our high school scholarship committee. It's already been through that committee and recommended to us um, and for me to bring to you. MELT Workout is offering a yearly scholarship to a male or female graduating senior who works hard to achieve his or her grades by staying after class or seeking extra help. The individual should be a team-oriented student, one who has background in athletics and who plans to pursue a career in which he or she can help other people. The scholarship will be in, an, in the amount of $250 and will be awarded annually and it will start this June, this spring. The recipient must have a 3.0 academic average, be a high school athlete, demonstrate financial need, and plan to pursue a career that involves helping people. They will also be asked to submit an essay about what the growth mindset means to them and share an instance in which he or she has exemplified the growth mindset in the classroom, on the playing field, or in the community. And uh, I believe we have Joe Kiribasi here tonight, and I believe he will be the person that will award the uh, scholarship uh, on, on the evening of the, the scholarship. So I would ask the board to consider approval of this scholarship for $250. Very good. So moved. Second. Are you second? Second. Any further discussion? Good morning. Joe, want to speak? Yeah. Good. Sure. Um, it just it's something that we want to just kind of empower students who might need that I know that for me I wasn't the best student with SATs but I worked my butt off and I got one scholarship that I wrote and it like turned me around it's like I can do this and it really set me up I think for success it's just so small wins we always preach that in working out it's all about small wins at melt but for students <coughs> that age I think if they can just get that help their parents out a little bit it'll kind of empower them to know that their capabilities and uh, help them excel in college and it's something that um, you know we have a very active uh, membership base in the community so the 250 mark if we raise 500 there would be two scholarships 750 would be three so thank you Joe. Thank, thank you, you, thank you, you very, very much very much very good thank you um, all in favor aye. 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 thank you another question um, Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I just have a question. What does MELT stand for, M-E-L-T? It's an acronym for more energy, less time. More so, energy, less time. So we specialize okay. in 30 minute workouts. <laughs> yeah. All righty. Very good. It's a burning question I had. So I appreciate, <laughs> you. I appreciate you answering that. Now I, now I, now I know. I hope I'll remember that. Very good. I'll quiz you next time. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Great. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Absolutely. Thank, thank you very, very much. So, and thank you very much for, for, uh, for the Nation for Scholarship. Again, it's a pleasure. Well worth it for our students, so great. All righty, we are now on to information and reports. We are at Exhibit 6, Special Education Program Presentation. Good evening, everybody. Happy New Year. Oh, Happy yes. New, New Year. year. So tonight we have uh, Helen Donaher, as you know, and uh, Christine Golden, who's putting up the name tag. <laughs> Here we are. As we do every year, an annual presentation, and tonight we'll not only bring you an overview of our special education program, but also bring some uh, budget uh, considerations for your review as well. So um, we'll kick it off to you, Helen. And Sounds great. Get started. Okay. Again, thank you. Again, my annual report. I always look forward to my yearly conversation with you. And we'll go through a, a couple of things on my next slide that outlines the presentation for you. But certainly, I want to thank Christine for being here and supporting me all the way through every day as she does. And Deb Service, thanks again for being here tonight. I, we've heard a lot of uh, little clips throughout the evening tonight that sort of blend right into special education, taking large problems and trying to break them down into small, you know, tasks that we can achieve. And that's what an IEP is. So, you know, we, we are about breaking things down into smaller components in special ed and, and finding those what we think are insurmountable odds and going for the gold. So, uh, you know, I look forward to our students' participation in the courses that we heard about today and making our curriculum accessible. And that's 
consistently been our theme here in special ed. So tonight I will share performance data with you from our annual report that is um, provided through the State Department of Education on the status of uh, special education in Simsbury. We'll talk a little bit and hopefully improve uh, or grow your understanding about transition and the importance about talking about transition planning, transition needs for our students with disabilities all the way through the continuum of their educational program. And lastly, we'll uh, get into to from that discussion some of our considerations for our 1516 budget so we'll sort of kick that off here tonight so our annual state performance report you should all have a folder in front of you there is a report in that folder that clearly uh, identifies all the areas of our targets and in the years past I did provide information to you about all of those 21 targets that were required to meet the state breaks that down again some big problems into smaller pieces we are required <coughs> to meet nine targets state sets the targets and we did meet requirements for those nine targets identified for us were some very good strengths that we continue to perform well in our state ass assessment participation our performance in reading as kids go on up through the grades uh, they are reading at higher and higher levels our high school dropout rate very small and no areas of disproportionate representation that's a hard standard to meet and that's across all disabilities it's across general ed special ed a rate of suspension um, disciplinary concerns and we meet that at very high levels this are also this report identify some focus areas for us and interestingly enough so you read graduation rate how is that uh, isn't that like that doesn't work we just have a great high school dropout rate very very low but why is our graduation rate a focus area for us and it's because graduation rate is now talked about in terms of graduating in four years time with a standard diploma and we know in Connecticut one of the few states is a state that provides opportunities for continued transition programming after you meet your high school graduation requirements so it's a little bit of an oxymoron right but the state will now be reporting this same data in uh, terms of four-year graduation rate five-year graduation rate and six-year graduation rate so they're coming in line with with what we are trying to accomplish in special education and then performance reading math CMT again our lower grades we see kids really meeting those targets as we move through the system but it's the lower grades we struggle to meet those benchmarks overall on state assessment but we know CMT is now off the table and we'll be talking about SVAC Helen, what does the disproportionate representation mean? What is that? Mm -hmm. What is that? So it, it's an interesting um, bit of information where we gather information about the rate of uh, minority populations, students with disabilities, and are we disproportionately identifying students with disabilities who come from a minority population? Thank you. So, and then there's a couple of others, but that's sort of what. Thank you very much. The basis for it. Our next slide talks about our prevalence rate in Simsbury and we talk with you yearly about the fact that Simsbury continues to be an outlier when you compare our prevalence rate with the DERG we did get a little bit closer and we are starting to see a little bit more of a band of a, a widening of that width um, between our DERG and Simsbury's performance but what we do note is that we are much more in line with the state as far as our uh, prevalence rate the other thing you notice with this line graph is that everybody sees an uptick so what we do know is happening in our school districts is our general ed enrollment is declining our prevalence and our special ed enrollment not so much we've been very consistent with our enrollment numbers in special education so that is why you would see a widening of that um, a widening of that prevalence rate and going from 11.6 to a 12.1 to and probably higher this year as we have um, a bit of a um, higher number for our enrollment in special education but again our numbers have been pretty consistent across the three to four years relative to our focus areas academically for our students with disabilities we reach toward those same district benchmarks that our CIP 
targets for all of our students. So we always talk about meeting uh, grade level expectations for our students with disabilities. But we, what we do know in special education is that we also have to look very individually at each child and meet their very unique needs at each grade level. So while we might be reaching toward those grade level benchmarks in special ed, we talk about downward extensions and identify those critical things that all students must learn in that grade and teach toward that. Again, taking a big chunk and breaking it down into smaller tasks called specialized instruction. But we all reach toward those benchmarks. And that last one, college and career ready by grade 12. Transition, we can't wait to talk about that in high school. We have to be talking about that sooner. And that's going to be a common thread through what we talk about tonight. That transition is critically important. Some of our data points in special education, again, we don't have a lot of those data points because we did not have um, all of our CMT and capped uh, assessment last year. We did our pilot with SBAC. But what we did take a look at is our science performance. What's important to note is that science is not an area of instruction, that's special education. We don't <coughs> teach science to students um, with special education, special um, with disabilities, for the most part. Our students are in their content classes along with their typical peers. So it's how we really address that. And if we look at our grade five scores, we're meeting our typical marker, which is saying, 50% or more of our students with disabilities will meet goal, grade level standards. And we pretty much do that across the board. When we get to capped in grade 10, not so much. And so we have to sort of step back and ask that question, what's different about that? Well, content is very, very different. And it is causing us to look at our service delivery models in our high school and say, you know what, we have to be standing side by side with our content colleagues co-teaching in those classrooms, not removing students from those classrooms, but providing that specialized instruction right in that classroom. So we are looking toward increasing our opportunities for collaborative teaching side by side with our colleagues in the classroom and helping our students with disabilities meet those targets. And we're going to work toward it. I know we celebrated our, our scores this year and not so much in special education. Additional data points that we look at in special education. So we're looking at our, our um, district-wide assessments. If you take a look at our green and our gold on our spring DRP results for our students in grades three to eight with disabilities, you can again see it's at 50%. Just about that 50% are meeting our grade level expectations or exceeding our grade level expectations. So that gray and that red below are approaching, they're pretty close, and we have to figure out how that specialized instruction helps them move into that green, into that gold, and our red are those students that represent more of a unique challenge, how to really break down those grade level skills into teachable skills that not only address grade level benchmarks, but address transition needs as well. What are those skills that those students are going to need as they move from grade to grade and then as they exit as young adults and move into the world? <laughs> Another um, data point for us in special education, we've been looking very closely at our goal mastery data and trying to move that ever closer to that 50% marker and then above. We always reach toward at least 70%, but what we realized as we began to analyze our IEP data is that we need to be smarter about our goal development. They need to be very clear and explicit for one year timeframes. That's what an IEP is written for. It's not a global goal, we'll become a better reader, but what needs to happen within that one year's time frame that will make that child a better reader. So we are breaking those goals down into very measurable pieces of information and in what we've really come to realize is we also have to be better at understanding where students are at that very moment in time in order to move them forward. And that's called present levels of academic and functional performance. So we're working Which, hard on in our professional learning communities. That's, what mm -hmm. add. that's where the, the, the heavy lifting of that work is really happening in our special education PLCs where we're really focusing on those present levels of performance and really making those goals and objectives very smart, very measurable, rigorous, but attainable um, to, really, to really be very thoughtful about how we build those IEPs. Back to that 
reason why we do this work. Why is that data important? Why do we collect that data? Why do we analyze those IEPs? <coughs> and it's because of transition. It's because our IDEA language in 2004 really became much more focused on those post-secondary outcomes and gathering um, information to help us ensure that students with disabilities move into adulthood as capable adults with disabilities, but capable, independent, working, going to post-secondary opportunities just like their typical peers. It is challenging, and what we know is you can't wait, right? It has to start early. So we are focusing sooner and sooner on these transition needs. We'll talk a little bit about a survey that went out and is in uh, actually a letter that I provided to parents is in your folder. Additionally, you have in your um, folders a document that was developed by our Connecticut State Task Force on transition that was uh, put together after our language changed in 2004 in our public law, IDEA. And what this task force did do, did accomplish, was identify very specific standards that special education teams really need to look at at all levels, preschool through high school, in developing these very important transition skills that if the students meet these, in all likelihood, they will be very successful adults. <clears throat> this. Um, this bit of information, while I don't have a lot of data there, it's, it's what we know about adults with disabilities and what we fear for adults with disabilities and what we have to tackle at a younger age in order to ensure that we reach better outcomes than that. Our students with disabilities need to move to jobs that they can, um, they can raise a family on just like all of us. So it's important that we pay attention to post-secondary outcomes. These post-secondary outcomes will actually become part of your state report that you will hear <coughs> someone reporting on next year. Um, <laughs> someone reporting on next year because they will be targets identified by the state. So sorry. <laughs> so my husband, he's patting me on the shoulder and he said, don't worry, hon. <laughs> but it is important that, you know, my transition is important and it's important to talk with folks around me so that they understand the importance of this work. It's not something that just rests solely in this office or in our classrooms with our teachers. It also rests with parents and that's where our collaboration needs to, to really, I think, improve and our emphasis needs to um, help parents understand why we talk about transition earlier when really what we want to talk about is that transition from elementary school to middle school. It all has to become part of that same conversation. So this district has partnered actually with the <coughs> University of Hartford in conducting a research study. Where are we with our transition understanding with our parents in the PPT process, with our teachers, so that we can get a greater level of um, a uh, higher level of post uh, outcome data for our students with disability, which is another area that we have trouble collecting. The state has a very difficult time getting survey responses back from our students who have exited one, two, three, four, and five years out. So we're working at ways to try and uh, gather that data in a better way, and I think that will come. I think that's going to be a major focus of the state work. So in, in the event that you've heard about our, our um, survey, our vertical transition team that put together uh, a great transition survey that I hope parents really take to heart and put in their special ed binders, which we are now providing to parents, and use it every year as we think about those IEP goals and objectives that we're developing for our students. Is this the first time a survey has been done like that? It is the very first time, and I really do give credit to our vertical transition team, which is um, a, a pretty large team. Uh, Deb sits on that team of our teachers who work primarily with students who take the alternate state assessment, the developmental checklist. <coughs> And th that's where we begin, that's not where we end, you know, but it is a starting point. And I think a good one because it is um, that population of students that really needs a very focused look at this work. Um, but all students with disabilities deserve that same attention. So going from that big T, we understand that it also leads to a little T and we've got to start early. So here comes the little T, and I'm going to steal or paraphrase Mr. Chris Kelly because he said something before that I was like, that is perfect for the See? little T conversation. He said, nothing great happens without intention. 
and the intention really is to get to the big T, you've got to, with careful intention, look at all the little T's, all the little transitions. Um, so when we, we think about transition for students with disabilities, we really need, need to make sure that all students have access to the standards-based um, uh, core levels of uh, academics. We need to provide them opportunities for social and um, uh, civic um, exposure to different range of experiences and opportunities. Um, but as Helen said, they really need the support or the team around them of caring adults, which are educators, friends, and, and primarily their families, too, um, to really engage in that deep partnership of, of a high level of collaboration so that at each level, preschool to elementary, elementary to middle, middle to high, and for some students beyond, those transitions at each level are very critical and they're scary. They're scary um, more so, I think, for parents and sometimes educators than the kids. The kids <laughs> seem to do the best. Um, but it's, if there's not a high level of collaboration at each level, there can be a breakdown and we won't, we won't really see that through line um, to the big T. So we're really hyper-focused on that and we have, as, as Helen said, the survey, the vertical team, and then the state um, has some, provided some great resources to parents and families that we have on our website as well and some um, catalogs that will be in all of our schools. And then I want to talk a little bit about so we know what we want to accomplish and we know how important transitions are, but then we have these things we call competing pressures at each level that make the challenges to have smooth transitions a little bit more challenging. And we thought we might just touch on them briefly. So when students come to us from birth to three, we have a 90-day transition period where we they bring, us, bring the students to us and we need to plan carefully for them. One of the unique challenges is that that's a rolling um, system because children turn three obviously throughout the calendar year and parents are not obligated um, to provide or disclose information about their child coming through so sometimes the transitions happen a little late and we get a little bit of surprise and we still need to make sure that we have an appropriate program then from preschool um, it, students move to one of their five elementary schools so that takes from one to five which creates a lot of opportunities for lots of dialogue, lots of planning and communication to ensure that students going from those um, pre-academic skills and those social um, programs really can meet the rigor of what's expected for them socially and academically in elementary school. And um, one of the challenges at the elementary school are, that we're in, encountering is that many of the students um, especially our kindergarten and first graders, a few of them are coming in and they're not buying what we're selling necessarily. So they've, um, they've decided that they might like something different and uh, so we're really uh, bringing in a lot of professional development and resources to work with our teams in order to understand these little, these little bugs and to understand what their needs are and to make sure that um, they can access the curriculum and be successful. And another challenge we have at the elementary um, grade level is we have um, predominantly two special ed teachers at el every elementary um, school, and that's um, splitting seven uh, grade levels, which um, the challenge is to know all that curriculum and to ensure that they know all the standards and can really meet those challenges. And then at the and then middle. A very significant transition from the elementary, again, six, seven years uh, in a school building, moving now to a secondary yeah. level where everything changes, lockers happen, all sorts of things. Social engagements begin to be a big part of a, a child's life. So we really need to pay attention to that transition between <coughs> elementary and secondary. Additionally, our content demands, I talked a little bit about that with the collaborative teaching and why we have to ensure that our special ed teachers are in those classrooms helping to <coughs> specialize that instruction. And our caseload size has grown significantly at the secondary level as our numbers have gone on up into the secondary levels. So it's harder to do that when you have larger caseloads. And then certainly as we move into high school, making sure that we paid attention to all of these standards on this transition uh, document and ensure that kids will exit out of high school, hopefully at that four year mark, but if not five year, hopefully, uh, with the skills they need to be successful adults. So they are competing pressures for all of our special educators and our colleagues, general ed teachers too, trying to meet the needs of our special ed students. I think we do it typically pretty well, but there are areas where we know we needed some support 
we appreciate the support of this board over the past couple years at helping us address some of those competing pressures. We've added increased supervisory support, which has allowed us to pay attention to those transitions, to help our teachers get the things that they need in order to meet those needs at all of those levels, Henry James, the high school, and even pre-K. We've added some additional professional supports where in years past we had cut, but we had new students that the demand has again increased. And our out of district PPT facilitator has been a great resource, helping us stay in district, meeting the needs here, um, but also meeting the needs of those students who sit out in a very focused way. Last year, adding the Ready, Set, Go program coordinator has been a very good move for that particular program that requires a great deal of supervisory support and attention and again another year where we had some additional needs for students and those things being considered into next year as we move into 1516 for some of the considerations we're going to ask the board to think about again some increased teaching staff at Terrafield school where we have those competing pressures the need to reduce some of our uh, load on our secondary staff at Henry James and the high school we need more transition support to move students into the community, actually in the community, and we have to provide some supervision and instruction directly in that community, and we need an additional support to do that. Some additional pre-K supports as we see birth to three students moving in that we really were not um, prepared for initially, um, but do have noticed that they're arriving. There are some firm numbers for you as we look at what those requests uh, might be in this year's budget. We're hoping some of that can um, be moved into my IDA grant that I propose for the next um, years, 15-17. It's a two-year grant, and I think some of that non-certified staff might go in that direction. Additional supports, not all, only staffing, so we do have that technology that we are always talking about that really meet the needs of all of our students. Read and Write Gold was a great <coughs> acquisition for this district and many teachers are thrilled with what it's able to provide all of their students in their classroom. So we need to continue for professional development with that as well as access to that. Co-teaching professional development, it's a skill. We have to help our teachers do this work right. Accessible curriculum is all part of that co-teaching piece behavioral supports which was a competing pressure that we talked about it's not only at our elementary school it's also at our secondary school where we are seeing increasing numbers of students struggle to get to school and we need some help with that this slide I think was in a presentation after mine last year and I'll ask Burke my colleague Burke to help um, sort of talk us through this particular driver sure. um, so this this was our attempt to show uh, expenditures from all sources, not just the operating budget, <coughs> the, uh, the IDEA grant, the excess cost uh, grant. And then it was broken down into three general categories, uh, starting at the, at the bottom. That was uh, highlighting the uh, Ready, Set, Go um, program last year. And uh, um, also, um, this year, it has been uh, relatively stable. The the next tier, that, that slightly larger tier, that uh, represents the out-of-district tuition and settlements category. And as you may uh, recall last year, that, that was up uh, considerably in 13-14 in from 12-13. Uh, we uh, requested and you funded uh, more dollars for that. Uh, this year, this represents our uh, best guess as to where we project by the end of this year we will be, and it's actually fairly uh, similar similar level uh, that it has uh, remained higher about 2.7 million dollars so um, that's just something that we're that we're uh, monitoring in this current year but obviously we'll, we'll also factor into uh, next year's budget and then the bulk of, of the um, spending is, is on all all other um, general programs from K to 12 and uh, beyond so that's those percentages are, are very similar to uh, last year of, of how those groups uh, break out. In a total, we, we project 14.38 million we spent in the fiscal year. And as you know, the very hardest thing to do is to is to is to budget for the uh, out of district tuition area. And then we get in the current year we get the excess cost money. We expect our first portion, I believe, February. 
that's how we net out in the uh, current year and hope to be able to absorb some of those costs. Did the percentage of that change at all, Burke, or is it we have, not been, we have not been given um, the information in a, a definitive way. We expect it will continue to be about 80% of that total uh, amount of uh, reimbursable <coughs> costs that exceed one and a half times the regular education cost. So we're up in, in um, placements um, from last year, uh, 23 to 24 currently. All of that's very important information, but what's also critical to transition is making sure, ensuring that our students with disabilities are full members of their community and feel welcome and accepted. We're very proud of our unified programs here in Simsbury. We have exceptional participation for, with our students with disabilities as well as our partners in all of our programs. Um, whether it's unified sports, unified theater. We have a very new program which has been highlighted through SCTV, which um, we're very excited about. A bit more about that we'd just like to show a little clip. Go right ahead. That was, a, that was too quick of a clip. That was oh, a quick right. clip. <laughs> <laughs> but this, this does speak to our unified <laughs> wellness program, me. which is I new at our high school this year. I'll no let it just run. What you're doing there. How does the class function? Do you meet once a week, twice a week? How does it work? So we meet seventh period um, every single day. So all of you uh, 11 and 12th graders out there, please join our class. Um, um, but we do a lot of the things that um, a regular PE class would do. We climb the wall, we run around the track, we do the mile, uh, we do a lot of team building activities. But the thing about our class that makes it so special is um, that we have students that will do that in our class but won't do it in other classes. So they may climb the wall in our class because they feel comfortable kind of with everybody else there rather than in a typical gym class, they may, may feel kind of pressured to do something uh, like that. Um, we just finished a track unit earlier in the year, um, and it was really nice to see the partners and the athletes running around the track together. We were seeing a lot of people kind of rooting each other on. Um, so it's not even just helpful for the athletes, it's helpful for the partners as well, because they're both working together to kind of accomplish the same goal. So um, did I um, read something that you also are doing life skills in this class and that you had to write some letters um, at the beginning of the year. Can you talk about that a little? So the, the way that we got a uh, majority of our partners to join our class uh, is that we had the athletes write letters. So we did a whole lesson um, in Elena's room about how to write a letter. What kind of information do you put in it? How do you address the envelope? And most importantly, how do you send it? Um, so by teaching them those skills, they were the ones that were kind of reaching out to the partners. Um, it wasn't us. So just like Unified Theater, we kind of took a step back and letting the athletes kind of pick where they wanted to be in their class. So were you involved in the letter writing? Did you did you send a letter or did you not do that? I don't remember. Don't remember. So what do you enjoy about the class? Um, I enjoy being able to socialize, make a lot of new friends. And all the athletic Do you climb the wall? Yes, I do. Yeah. <laughs> what are the other things that you you Oh, uh, we do everything. We do kickball, basketball, weightlifting, running. And do you do those things outside of this class as well, or does this give you some freedom too? Um, well, we do a lot more than I do, obviously, outside of school. Um, I do play sports outside of school, but this is just like a regular gym class. It's it's everything that you do grades 9, 10, and 11, and, but this is just more modified so that for people in wheelchairs, they do have the ability to do something that maybe in a regular gym class they would have to sit out, and that's what we're trying to avoid. We want everybody to really be a part of it. That's really important, you know? Thanks. Again, brand new class, brand new course at Simsbury High, very proud of it, and it is about involvement and um, including all of our students. So we're very proud of the work, uh, very proud of the work that our teachers do every day and uh, all of the support staff. So I just um, want to be sure I take a moment to thank the team behind me and behind Christine on a daily basis and the parents, the leadership teams, and thank you to the board because we do appreciate your support. I think we do great things here in Simsbury. Thank you. Thank you. Questions? Thank you.
Any questions? questions? Tom. Yeah. Thank you very much, Helen. You're welcome. Wonderful presentation. Well, I think the focus on transitions is a, a wonderful, a wonderful thing. I think um, you know, having being a parent who's gone through the system uh, with a child with disability, I think that those transitions are scary to, mm -hmm. to listen to what you guys are talking about. But I also think that you know. Um, Breaking it down, I think the, the team, the, the administrative team that I've experienced through the course of you know 18 plus years in the town it, it has, had, has done a great job of breaking it down. It's just that communication and that follow through on execution. Those pieces, I think, really can be emphasized. So, the pro so I think it's great you're doing a survey. I think it's great that you're focusing on it. I think um, communication is going to be really critical. Execution is going to be really critical. And I also think defining success is going to be really hard too. I don't know how, you know, because that's going to be different for, for everybody, you know what I mean? Right. So those, as, as you were making, making those comments and going through that presentation, that really hit home for me personally, mm -hmm. as well as, you know, as, as a board member. I just think defining success as a team, as administrative team, and as a, as a community, I think it's really important. And uh, I really oh, enjoyed that video, too. Great. Good to see, Great. Good to see Matt. Doing a good job there, too. Yeah. Good hire. Good hire, Helen. Great hire. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. And I think you, you raised some very critical points. That, you know, I don't know how many of you know about our futures planning process that we have trained staff in this district to participate in futures planning maps, which is a very involved process that not every child gets to go through but wouldn't it be wonderful if they did gathering all of your family people near and dear to you teachers around the table to talk about what might define success for a student as they exit out so I think it's paying attention to those kinds of things so I appreciate those comments thank you anyone else no? okay thank you very much thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Alrighty, moving along, we are now on to Exhibit 7, the 2015-2016 budget. And with that, we have the budget binders before you. Okay, we get to, we get to start looking at these briefly tonight. Um, and I already have one thing. We have to give Chris a copy of his updated to, uh, historical <laughs> sheet. I mean, yeah. Yeah. The historical sheet, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> going to uh, just put briefly on, on the tabs that are, that, are, that are here and then we're going to get into the CIP executive. The um, memo that I'm handing out is the um, summary of, of, of what I'm going to talk about with this uh, latest draft. But just talking about the book in, in general, we have the uh, schedule on the inside cover, um, you know, showing what we're going to do at, at the next uh, several workshops and uh, regular budget meetings. We have the uh, anticipated adoption on February 24th of support uh, operating budget. We have the capital um, improvement plan uh, endpoint, which is fe uh, February 10th, so that we can meet the uh, deadlines in the town charter. And we also are showing the, um, the current uh, board of finance and other hearing dates down uh, down at the bottom. It's still subject to change, but based on the pre board meeting, I think you, you know that we've. Uh, Got some some good uh, sense of where those dates are going to be. So, skipping over the uh, capital improvement tab, the first tab, we'll come back to that. We've got the class size uh, report that you've seen uh, this this fall, but is a good resource to go back to. The enrollment report is the next tab. Again, you've seen that uh, document, and then uh, the third tab is. Facilities and enrollment task force. So all those three really are uh, related and, and uh, are foundational data. We have uh, this education presentation that you heard this evening is now in here for you. So this is uh, tonight's major um, presentation. Next week will be enrollment and staffing, and then we'll be handing out that um, presentation for your binders next week. In terms of the settlements, we have that uh, references to those contracts that are settled. We'll be starting um, for uh, the SFEP and the nurses' contracts, which are expiring June June 30th. So that's those are, the, those are our next up mm -hmm. personnel and uh, negotiation 
Council and committee members. Next tab on uh, regional and cooperative efforts uh, has been revised with some of our most recent conversations, so that's a little bit different than you've seen. Regarding the next tab, partially funded and unfunded mandates, um, we have included the still most, most recent update, which is uh, from February 2013. We will uh, plan to give you any, at, at a, a future meeting, any, any summaries of more uh, recent mandates. This is the most recent available that we could find from the state office. Of and then last but not least, <coughs> you always enjoy the 30 year data history. Um, so that they've, uh, that they've hold back up so carefully and we try to continue that tradition. These, uh, some, some of these figures will be um, available at, at different periods of time, so we will update these uh, for you, but this is the latest and greatest data we have. All right, so that's some of your background data. Turning to the front of the books again, the six-year CIP, back in uh, the end of October, we showed you the so-called roll roll forward, um, which was the remaining five five years. Now we've got the draft dated uh, January 13th, the so-called administrative first draft. It's going to keep changing, but we're showing you uh, focusing on the first year, 15-16. That's, that's the year that the uh, voters will be look to, looking to uh, to actually fund. And we've, we've made some uh, recommended changes. Uh, Bulleted those out in the uh, memo from those uh, first year uh, projects. We still have a district network infrastructure uh, program for $200,000. That's uh, the primary spending on that would be to upgrade the speed of our um, uh, switches from our network from 100 megabit to 1 gigabit, and there's some other server work and, and other items there. Um, we did move forward um, what had previously been uh, in this next year was a tennis court replacement project. It was 430000 We moved that out several years with it to be <coughs> determined. Um, the reason for that is that the uh, high school and the uh, athletic director, Dane Street, as I think you may recall from his presentation a few, uh, a few meetings back, would like to continue to look comprehensively at uh, master planning for the, uh, the whole high school field area. Dane believes there may be a better location for the tennis courts than uh, replacing them in their current location. So really without, without looking at, at, at all of those in, in context, we felt it was premature to, uh, to move you know, forward with that. So you'll see that um, under, under the listing of Simsbury High School, we had done the track this past year. We, had, we have uh, noted that there will need to be turf field re total replacement uh, that's in 1718 but we also have highlighted through uh, planning with all of our principals five-year planning that took place prior to this meeting tonight that um, they see that we should really be looking a little bit more comprehensively at the uh, renovation of our uh, stadium our bleachers the accessibility of those uh, access to um, uh, bathrooms things of that nature and they've also uh, pointed out that they feel that we should be considering uh, a second turf field going forward. So we've put that in there for uh, discussion uh, to be determined in terms of the cost estimate, but it would, it would make sense that if we were gonna do a, a field, uh, if, if we're gonna uh, replace our turf field as we know needs to, to be done after about 10 uh, years, that would be a logical time if you're gonna do a second field. To, do, to combine that into one project. So the thought, uh, the thought process is that the current JV field uh, could essentially be made a, a, a turf field, so now you would, you'd have less uh, conflicts with um, sports needing to practice or play on that turf uh, surface. So that's, that's a new project shown in the third, third year of this plan. I should say at the outset that this, um, this plan was shown in, in, in draft form when I had the opportunity to meet with our town uh, staff in, in the early stages of their uh, town uh, CIP project development. So uh, moving, moving down the 2015-16 uh, column, um, we've had a window replacement uh, scheduled for several years. It's been moved out and moved out. And I'm 
showing that moving out to uh, 1718. That would be for Latimer, Tooton Hills, and uh, Squadron schools. It's not been uh, well defined, but in terms of Latimer Lane, we put that out into the same year as the Latimer Lane uh, boiler and the Latimer Lane uh, renovation project. We thought that that would make sense to address those in a similar time frame. So the climate control uh, uh, project is the next one that you see there for 2.15 million. Previously, we had carried forward and moved forward for several years a climate control project for 900,000. That was cooling, but not air conditioning uh, for most most of those buildings. Is that the, what is that, the wish for air conditioning? Is that, <laughs> that is cooling yeah. without air conditioning? Yeah, work. cooling versus air <laughs> conditioning. The, 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 the use of large fans Warry such as at Henry James to cool, uh, to cool down spaces such as the cafeteria, which has made a, a mm -hmm. difference. Mm -hmm. That was really all that was contemplated in the records that I could find for six of our schools. Um, it was not talking about air conditioning of those schools. And then it, there was one large potential project for uh, students for a high school. That's what made up the nine, uh, the 900,000. After a lot of conversation with, with Matt and with uh, principals that we've heard from, um, looking to try to, to make some improvements to priority areas of our of our schools. If we were going to talk about air conditioning, <coughs> retrofitting yeah. schools, we'd be talking in the tens of millions of, of yeah. dollars. We know that's not, that's just not feasible, it's not practical, but we really wanted to take a look and so we engaged um, prior uh, associates, the uh, engineering firm out of uh, Farmington, really looking at all options from the most uh, simple to, to somewhat more uh, sophisticated, mm -hmm. and that's what we're currently doing for all seven buildings. We've got prioritized uh, recommendations from each school. They went to each school, met with their principals and the senior uh, custodians, and so this is really a first phase. This sum of money we're going to be uh, bringing back and showing what what we could do in, in all of our buildings mm -hmm. to make a uh, difference, and then in the second phase we're showing um, to be determined we could we uh, we will have data we just received the first round of, of uh, recommendations and we'll come back with a, a, a second number for your next meeting to get a real sense on that but that's something that has not been uh, done in, in a real definitive way previously this is everything from putting window units in at a commercial grade uh, to what we call split split systems which we've done in uh, areas such as D172 at the high school and some of the offices at Henry James, the Henry James Library uh, Media mm -hmm. Center, those types of, of um, uh, small um, room by room or, or area by area projects. So we are looking uh, and, and are, and are going to be bringing that back to you uh, in upcoming meeting. I would note that um, in in this next year, this, the Central School Roof Project it has been on for uh, multiple years. This is this is the year that we feel we can't push it back any any further. Uh, so, looking at what we had in last year's uh, column for this year, we're actually less dollars. We're, at, we're all these changes net out to fewer to fewer dollars than than we had estimated for the 15, 16 years. That's not the case for the out years, but for this year in, in the question, I just wanted to point that out. Uh, any questions on the first year? Before I move on a little bit. So, so why? Do, so I'm sorry, Burke. Why did it go down then? Just because the estimates kind of went down? No, no. Just just because of the projects the that project were pushed push. that, that that were pushed out. So the okay. the 430 thousand for the uh, tennis court project was pushed out. <coughs> the window project, you see that that same 1.25 million uh, moved out to 1718. Yeah. So what I essentially did is I took that same that same dollar amount that had been in the first year, added it to the nine hundred thousand that was in the climate control previously. That's really where that two point one yeah, gotcha. is coming from. Yeah. And we've moved um, we've moved the uh, we've kept the um, central school project. Um, roof, the roof. Place the roof. Yeah. So that one stayed the same, basically. Mm -hmm. The seven seventy that stayed the same. Yeah. Right, okay. you figured out how much you get yeah. the and the other one just moved out. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. I'm sorry. Thirty thousand less. So what we'd like to do, I think it's on the twenty seventh, mm -hmm. is we would like to come back with another level of, of detail and a brief, you know, brief overview and presentation of 
Henry James and some of the changes that have taken place as Burke has taken a deeper look and work with Brian White on the Henry James project. Um, the information you see and what this vision of the Simsbury High School kind of athletic complex or uh, their ideas would be. We really push people this year on kind of looking out five years. Um, so I feel like as we come to you, we, we need to give you another layer of information on what that thinking and what the, that vision looks like and the <coughs> cooling as well. So uh, we figure we would show what the roll up looks like tonight, answer any basic questions you have and come back with that next level of um, information at the, the next meeting on the 27th. So just so I'm clear on the 27th, the, the numbers are the, the uh, items, the stadium renovation and the turf field number two that are TBD, you'll have a, a scope of our budget number for that by then, will you, on the 27th? Well, we would have a, we'd have a preliminary number. Um, what, what's, what's happening is we have a, uh, the same firm that helped us with the track uh, and turf is, is going to be coming back out uh, most likely this, this, uh, this week looking at some of the um, uh, drawings that we had from the uh, construction uh, of the of the stadium and looking to do some further master planning for us. So they will be able to give us some general cost estimates of, uh, of uh, second, you know, second field, uh, what some of the upgrade costs would uh, be. But what we're also trying to do is, is discuss some of the feasibility that Dane would like to see of what if you what if we move the tennis courts, move some of the throwing areas, what does that do? What are the costs for um, for moving um, parking area then? So that I don't I don't expect that they'll they'll necessarily have a final number, but they're gonna no, but first look a, at whether it's feasible. So we're we're gonna, we're gonna first go with that feasibility. We may we may determine that nope, those things can't really work. We'll come back to a more standard um, approach for uh, tennis courts that would address some of the drainage concerns too. There was a concern about the current location. Uh, that right. the drainage the beneath it was one of the reasons why it was going to keep, mm -hmm. keep feeling. But I, I'm, I'm told there are different ways to um, construct tennis courts that would, that would uh, make that less likely to be a problem, even if it, if it uh, was in the same uh, location again. And remind so me what we, back. sorry, Burke. Remind me what we did with the uh, roof at the crew boathouse. Did we? Uh, last year it was shown in, in one of the, um, one of the board's meetings it ultimately was not um, included within your recommended plan and they felt that uh, uh, they would continue to fund to do fund okay. raising and, and we've not had a current conversation about that okay but I'll check in on meeting with the town if there's been any changes um, last I heard they were on a fund they were you know they were advertising and they were still looking to raise funds and then in terms of uh, Henry James, I wanted to note that you know, we, we broke out the two main office projects. You'll, the board will be, will be hearing more about the status of those at your um, meetings in uh, February. And we've worked with the same architect to look at this uh, scope of work, uh, showing this project in 1617. <coughs> Looking more carefully at, at that scope of work, they gave us a preliminary number. I expect that we're going to come back um, we will present on the uh, 27th with that current scope of work. We're looking to um, to try to address concerns that the uh, principal has about not only the library and media center needing to be um, uh, created a new space, but also some meeting space for um, teams. We don't we don't have uh, we don't have the auditorium, of course, but we're we're, we're currently trying to find space to have. A, fairly large group of, of students uh, in in one appropriate space. So that's something we're, we're going to be meeting um, with the architects are going to do a, a visioning session with us on what that library media center space, that new footprint could do, if it, uh, how large it can be within the, uh, the area behind the main office, sort of in the, in the, in the back of the building, and um, bring that vision forward for you. So we expect that uh, that will be on January 30th. So you'll get a general uh, presentation with uh, Brian Brian White and with the concept at your next meeting. And then we'll uh, follow that up with uh, the results of that visioning session. So we're, we're, we're gonna have uh, a real cost estimate um, that would also consider the fact that construction would not be able to be done over like a summer. So we would need some sort of temporary space, some sort of swing space. And, and I've asked them to put all those types of considerations for about an 18-month project 
uh, into the cost estimate so it's the most comprehensive that it can uh, can uh, be. We I think we've learned a bit from uh, this year's pro you know project that if we're going to do improvements to the first floor, we're going to need to consider that on the second floor. Right. Mm -hmm. If we're going to finish you know finish renovating the building in. Uh, addition to the science rooms, uh, library and media center. We've also looked at, uh, we're starting to look at the elevator as something that needs to be replaced there. So we're trying to be as comprehensive as we can be. So you'll be getting more information at your next meeting and uh, sure. When does this need to be finalized? When do we need to vote on this and approve and finalize this? Meeting of February 10th would be the, would be the target date and that's, and that's on your, um, your overall schedule. I wanted to point out one new, one new project. Yep. This is the next meeting, two meetings, two, two meetings. Two meetings, right. Yeah. One in between. The final approval. Okay. Two. It'll be the third meeting. Right. From now. Mm -hmm. So we've got uh, one new project that I just wanted to note that was added, and that's a Henry James Tennis Court replacement. It's the very last one showing it in uh, 2020. Uh, it has also had cracks that have been repaired on a regular basis, similar to the high school. So, just wanted to make sure that you noted that that needed to get get added to our uh, radar. There were a couple of projects that were discussed that came out of our um, five-year planning with principals that didn't get included on here at this time. One of them was uh, for Terrafil uh, to look at making permanent music wing classrooms where we currently have the modulars that were. Uh, renovated a bit on the uh, exterior in our in our uh, last project at Terrafield, uh, 2010, roughly completion. The other two items were at Simsbury High School. One was um, a concept for a, a black box theater, which many of you may some some of you may have heard of of that of that concept. But it's a, a smaller performance space that's very versatile. Um, cost estimates for that and and a specific location from an existing area have not been uh, determined so it wasn't felt that it was ready to come forward but that that concept is something we've been hearing about a need for for uh, several years so uh, when that's more fully developed we'll bring that forward uh, but not for this uh, for this round and then lastly uh, a fairly large concept which was uh, the a wing at Simsbury High School which was the one wing that was not uh, totally renovated during the, the last renovation projects, uh, Neil would like to see some sort of renovations to those classroom spaces. We don't have a fully uh, developed or cross estimate, just want to put it on your uh, radar screen that that, um, you know, that was something that was never done during the prior renovation project and, and he feels that's something we should be planning for. Where is the A-wing? Essentially when you go in, it's the ground, the, the, the ground floor. Um, when you go straight in from it's the from the uh, main entrance beyond the gym, and down, down, down the, the ramp, the, 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 the original, the original the field. Field. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yep. okay. So these these uh, these net numbers kind of all fall within the guidelines, <laughs> the financial guidelines. We have not uh, compared the overall numbers yet to see what the town has, and and that that will be part of our part of our process. I mean, clearly. Um, where you where you run into problems with a project of the scope of like the Henry James project, right. similar yes. to Simsbury High School, you're going to stick with um, bond ten year options. bonding, mm -hmm. seven seven percent guidelines probably not going to work. But I think there's recognition and, and there was some um, modeling last year yep. with that uh, yep. that firm where they showed a, a fifteen year in uh, one of those. So it's up to the, it's up to the board of but ultimately we feel that uh, we need to give a realistic perspective of what renovating this building would be after about 10 years of trying to right. adjust it. Is there a reason we're not um, breaking up the window replacement? Because if we're going to do the major renovation on Latimer, could we not do Tootin and Squadron Line? Because it's just been on here so long. Is there a reason not to separate that? Uh, I think I think it makes sense to separate them. And, and frankly, I just, I, I've never been able to see um, significant data behind uh, the cost estimates for all these windows that um, the a current estimate I still think this is sort of a place a placeholder what's gotten more complicated is the environment for hazardous materials with PCB caulking and um, it's very very difficult now to to touch certain um, windows you know without testing it's a bit of a catch-22 once you test it and 
you open it up. So um, I think starting with Latimer, that seemed to be the priority of those three, and I would I would agree that we should address each of those and probably break you know break them out. I've not seen a payback schedule that made it uh, a, something that you know it, it was we were going to save uh, enough to 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 you know the efficiency would really help pay for itself within any sort of less than 20 year time frame. So that's one of the reasons why I think these have been okay. All right. Any other further questions? Thank you, Burke. Thank you. This was Thank you. Um, very, very informative. We have a lot of work to do, but I know where we stand. All righty. So we are now at our second public audience. Anyone in the audience would like to address the board? As I said, we have a new board, and I would like to recognize Maya, our student in the background. <laughs> Welcome again this evening. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're glad to uh, to have you have you join us. Anything you'd like to contribute this evening? I really enjoyed the uh, presentation, and I'm actually looking forward myself to taking AP Computer Science next year. So <laughs> it was cool to see it. It was like a sign. I was like, oh, I'm doing the right a thing. <laughs> Okay, well, Brian will give you a lot of information. <laughs> <laughs> it's a wonderful class. You're going to love every minute that's of it. That's all I hear, all the good things. Great, great. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. All right. Um, before I um, adjourn here, our, I just would like to remind the board that next um, Thursday, um, January 22nd, is the Legislative Breakfast um, hosted by Craig at um, the LOB. So it's at 8 a.m. If anyone is inter interested in uh, in attending, I do encourage you to come. Um, Representative Hampton um, left, unfortunately, but uh, he will also be there. But uh, there's a lot at stake this year in the legislature, a lot affecting our education um, budgets. So if uh, you sure all have the uh, email, so if you have any questions, um, give me a call. But I do hope uh, if you have an opportunity to attend um, that you're there and make your voice heard. So, um, so that's next Thursday. All right, our next Board of Education meeting is Tuesday, January 27th, and you all have your pink sheets here, and we will be in uh, those of uh, our budgets then. So I do encourage those of you that are watching, now is the time to come to attend our meetings as we um, commence the budget process. And if you have any questions, um, feel free to uh, ask them during the meeting or contact superintendent. So we, um, that's it. All right, I would like to have a motion to uh, go into executive session to discuss a personnel matter. I see a motion. I have a motion. Motion. So Thank second. you. A second. Any discussion? Seeing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. And thank you, and we'll see you on the 22nd. Oh.